呃，大家好，我是国立清华大学电机系黄眼界。在上一个单元里头，我们介绍了一些基本的概念，就是波导的基本的概念。那在这个单元，我们特定要介绍矩形的金属波导 （rectangle 啊、uh, 啊、uh, metal wave guide）。那呃，在这个单元里头呢，因为我们要开始做仔细的分析。啊、呃，你会看到不少的这个数学的呃式子等等，看起来相当的复杂。那在这个介绍里头啊、呃，我没有避开这些复杂的计算，就是因为呃，各位同学除了能够了解里头的呃这个物理的内涵之外，啊、呃，说不定你不需要去买一本书去检查里头的仔细的计算，你只要看这些呃投影片的话，你还是有办法。做一些呃清楚的推导，所以呢，呃里头我放多一点式子在里头，就是让你能够顺着这个投影片的内容，能够自己做推导。但是在这个呃研读的过程里头，物理的概念最重要，所以呢，啊、呃、要特别留意我介绍的一些物理的概念。So, ah,、uh, initially I'm going to use parallel plate wave guide as one example, ah,、uh, to tell you. The more field and also cut off,、uh, and later the loss inside this the wave guide. Then we start to move into analysis for a rectangular wave guide、uh, with a TM mode inside and then TE mode inside. And finally, I want to、uh, guide you to、uh, calculate the loss in the、uh, metallic wave guide, and then we'll have some、uh, review. So in this first session,、uh, we're going to discuss relevant physics in parallel plate wave guide. A parallel plate wave guide consists of two big、uh, metal plates、uh, in this example, and the wave propagates along z direction. The gap is along y direction, and the dimension of the、uh, wave guide in x direction is very big. Therefore, there's no variation of the field along x direction. So、uh, it's a two-dimensional analysis relevant to y and z. So suppose we have a TM wave inside this wave guy. This means that、um, uh, we have the z component of the electric field along axial direction, along the propagation、uh, direction of the wave. And then、uh, we can just write down the z component of the electric field、uh, to be like this. Now we only have variation of the field、uh, along y direction and also along z direction. But along z direction is a propagation direction of the wave. And let's put this into a、uh, Helmholtz equation. The Helmholtz equation、uh, given from the last lecture is the、uh, has a, a two-dimensional Laplacian operator before this electric field. But now、uh, we want to drop this x variable because the,、uh, we don't have any variation along x direction. Therefore,、uh, this Helmholtz equation reduced to this expression, with the first term、uh, having the e z differentiated by uh, uh, the y、uh, coordinate, and、uh, the second term is the eigenvalue square of the eigenvalue multiplying with the、uh, e z. And this is the ordinary、uh, second-order differential equation. Therefore, there's a standard solution like this. And、uh, the standard solution consists of sine and cosine as a function of y. And this solution is understood、uh, by looking into these two boundaries because these two boundaries、uh, are going to set up a standing wave along y direction. Therefore, you have sine solution and、uh, cosine solution. And、uh, whether or not you choose this sine or cosine,、uh, and uh, how uh, you de determine this a and b will depend on、uh, your boundary conditions. So let's put boundary conditions into the solution. The boundary condition is that the, the tangential component of the electric field、uh, has to vanish、uh, on the conduction、uh, boundary, and easy. The z component electric field is a tangential component at y equal to zero and y equal to b. Therefore, if you put、um, uh, y equal to zero into、uh, this solution, then this b coefficient has to be equal to zero. Otherwise, 
the boundary condition cannot be satisfied. So now we remove this b immediately. Then we have a second boundary condition that is y equal to b. Uh, your z component electric field has to be equal to zero. So you put b into this sine h y and write as the sine h a uh, uh, sine h b equal to zero. Then you have this eigenvalue k y equal to m pi over b. So now uh, you have the specific uh, expression for the z component of the electric field inside this waveguide, and uh, this n. Uh, can be 1, 2, 3, but cannot be 0, because if n equals to 0, then you have no uh, z component of electric field. Now, uh, given the n, there's a specific field pattern called a waveguide mole denoted by Tmn mole in the waveguide. So for different n, the field patterns will be different, and also the behavior of the wave will be different. Now, uh, with EZ, uh, from the last lecture, you know that uh, if you figure out EZ or HZ in the waveguide, you can calculate all other components of the field. So for this case, uh, we already have the Z component of the electric field given by this expression. Then you can calculate HX, EY, uh, HY, EX. But for these two components, uh, you have to do differentiation of the EZ field with respect to X. Therefore, uh, you get zero because uh, there's no variation of the field along the large dimension, the x dimension. So we drop these two terms. We only deal with these two terms in the parallel plate waveguide. So on the last page, we have phasor solutions. And if I multiply the phasor solution with exponential g omega t and take real part of it, then I will be able to write down the real expression of all the field. Uh, EZ, EY, and HX. And uh, you see that the, uh, the uh, component EY and HX are in phase. That is because when you calculate the uh, power flow along Z direction, uh, you will get a net flow, some average power along X direction. Therefore, uh, these two fields have to be in phase. There, uh, then you can get a net power flow uh, along z direction. But if you look at this EZ components, this cosine dependence give a 90 degree all phase with respect to EY and HX. This means that the, when you calculate the power flow, the average power flow along uh, y direction or negative y direction, then you end up having nothing because you set up a standing wave along y direction. And for standing wave, there's an equal amount of power propagating in opposite direction. Therefore, along y direction, you don't get any net uh, power flow. And that's why that uh, your EZ is all phase, 90 degree all phase with respect to EY and HX. Now, let's uh, put n equal to one into the expression. Well, I need to point out to you that you cannot put n equal to zero into this expression because if you put n equal to zero into this expression, then EZ disappears and uh, this waveguide mole becomes a TEM wave mole. So let's put one into this expression and then the uh, profile of the field uh, uh, along y direction is going to be described by those standing wave uh, uh, expressions, sine, uh, cosine, cosine, are standing wave expressions along y direction. And uh, we can plot the electric field line uh, denoted by this uh, uh, ray curve and also magnetic field line uh, on this uh, uh, cross section of the waveguide uh, denoted by the uh, blue curve. So you can see that uh, uh, for Z component of electric field, because it's sign dependence, so uh, you have the uh, Z component electric field for this, in this pattern pointing backward direction. But uh, uh, down here, you're going to see the electric field uh, 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 pointing in the uh, forward direction. That is because the uh, field along Z direction is anti-symmetric uh, about this uh, x, uh, y equal to uh, b over 2 axis. And you also see that uh, for the uh, y component of the electric field, 
it go into the uh, conducting surface because on the conducting surface, the electric field has to uh, point around the surface normal direction. And for this edge of X, for this edge of X, you can see that the, uh, on the boundary, the uh, magnetic field uh, is just strong because the uh, a magnetic field can induce a surface current on this the, uh, conducting boundary. And now we want to talk about the dominant mode of a waveguide. Uh, previously, uh, we knew that uh, this eigenvalue edge defines a cutoff frequency for a waveguide, and now this cutoff frequency is a function of mode number n and also the uh, waveguide dimension b. b is the gap of the uh, waveguide. And so the, uh, we can calculate the cutoff frequencies for different tm mode. Uh, for example, uh, if we put the n equal to zero into this expression, and you found that, that there's no cutoff frequency because your cutoff frequency is going to be equal to zero. And the reason is that the, when n equal to zero, uh, your z component electric field disappear. So it is not a tm mole anymore. It's a tm mole inside the waveguide. So the lowest uh, cutoff frequency mole for tm uh, wave inside such a waveguide is tm one mole. And so if you put the uh, n equal to one into this expression, then you will be having the uh, cutoff frequency for tm one more. Uh, if you put n equal to two into this expression, then you will have the cutoff frequency for the uh, tm two more. And uh, we define a dominant mode of a waveguide is the mode having the lowest cutoff frequency. So for this case, the uh, lowest cutoff frequency uh, uh, would uh, be uh, described by this expression where your n equal to 1. So tm1 mole is the dominant tm mode of this waveguide. Now, we want to uh, follow uh, very similar steps to analyze a TE wave inside such a, a parallel plate waveguide. So now we start with the z component of the magnetic field. And again, because this is the parallel plate waveguide with no variation along x direction, so we only write down this the edge dependence on y and also z. And uh, you put this the expression into the Helmholtz equation and drop the differentiation of this edge with respect to x because there's no variation along x then you will have a standard solution for this HZ field. Again, this is the standing wave uh, in the vertical direction, y direction, because you have two boundaries in this waveguide. And uh, through the boundary conditions, we need to decide this A, B, and H uh, in this expression. And we knew that the boundary condition would require the tangential component of the electric field must vanish at these two boundaries at y equal to zero and y equal to b. And uh, so we have to convert this z component of the h field into x component of the electric field. And this uh, formula allow, allows us to do it. You just do the differentiation of this h field around z direction with respect to y, then you can find out the x component, the tangential component of the electric field uh, on this boundaries. So there's still the differentiation to this the h of z. Then uh, you're going to see that the, the tangential component of the electric field is going to be proportional to this and this. Because if you differentiate the sine with respect to y, you end up having cosine. If you differentiate cosine uh, with respect to y, then you end up having this minus sine in this expression. Now we are in the position to put in the boundary conditions. Let's first put y equal to zero uh, uh, into this uh, uh, e of x and set it equal to zero. Then we, uh, f we find that the, the, this a has to be equal to zero because if you put this the y equal to zero into this expression and set this e x to be equal to zero, then a has to go away. So the first boundary condition will give you uh, a result that uh, your a has to be equal to zero. Then the second boundary condition is that uh, when y equal to b, 
then this ex has to be equal to zero. So set it into this expression. You write sine hb equal to zero. Then uh, from this expression, you will have the eigenvalue h equal to m pi over b. Through uh, those the boundary conditions, uh, you are able to write down the uh, specific form for the edge uh, component along z direction. So this is the final result for the z component of the magnetic field. And uh, you found that the, the uh, magnetic field is going to be a maximum value at uh, those boundaries because a magnetic field can induce surface current on conducting boundary. Therefore, uh, usually the magnetic field on the surface of the conducting uh, boundary is going to be a maximum value. Again, for a specific mole number n, uh, there's a specific field pattern called waveguide mole denoted by Tn in the waveguide. And uh, again, if you know the z component of the edge field, then you can uh, just extract the formulas in the last lecture and then construct all the expressions the, uh, for uh, this waveguide mode. And I listed here the three components uh, of the field in the waveguide mode. It is complicated. Uh, but um, if we just put n equal to 1 into those expressions and just look into the profile along y direction, then uh, you can plot the field pattern like this. And uh, the red color uh, gives you the uh, lines of the electric field, and the blue uh, curves give you the magnetic field lines. For example, uh, if we look into the uh, z component of the uh, magnetic field, you can see that um, uh, at the boundary uh, y equal to 0 and y equal to b, the uh, the field become uh, tangential to the boundary because the tangential field uh, uh, of the magnetic field is going to induce surface current. And then uh, if we look at the uh, vertical uh, field uh, for the magnetic uh, uh, field, then uh, it's mostly for this the mole, it's mostly the, uh, uh, at the, the axial point uh, the, along the axis of the uh, waveguide. And for EX, uh, that is a tangential field uh, along the, uh, the uh, waveguide uh, direction that is going into the ball direction. Uh, and this is described by this sine function. And uh, then we can also uh, calculate the cutoff frequency from this eigenvalue because we already figure out this eigenvalue to be m pi over b from the boundary conditions. And by definition, uh, you can calculate the cutoff frequency uh, based on uh, this relationship. Then uh, the cutoff frequency for uh, Te uh, m mole is going to be given by this expression. So this expression is the same as the Tm m mole uh, in the parallel plate waveguide. Uh, but be careful that um, uh, for n equal to 0, Te 0 mole uh, also does not have a cutoff frequency. Uh, because a Te uh, zero mole uh, basically is a Tm mole uh, inside this waveguide without any uh, cutoff. So uh, in this uh, session, uh, we talk about the mole and also mole field and cutoff frequencies inside parallel plate waveguide. So in the Tem. 这个波在里头 那通常这个切线方向的磁场呢会是最大值因为切线方向的电场在导体的表面 
它的 n 不能带零进去，因为当你 n 带零进去的时候呢，这个模态呢会变成 t n mod。那我们同时呢，介绍了所谓的 dominant mode 主要的这个模态。这个主要模态呢的定义是，呃，任何就是在一个这个波导里头，它的这个截止频率最低的这个模态叫做 dominant mode。所以对于这个呃平行板的这个呃 waveguide 来讲的话，它的呃呃 dominant mode 就是这个呃当你带一、e、进去的这个 T M 或 T 1啊、呃、这个 mode。啊，就是 T 一 one more 或者 T M one more， 那这个是第一个小节里头啊、呃、要跟大家介绍的，谢谢。